Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. And the very first thing I want to mention before I forget is my Super Clean giveaway where you win a four pack of Super Clean and your choice of a Super Clean hat um, is about to be up. Remember, I'm going to do that on July 1st. So if you haven't entered or you would like a chance to enter, down in the video description and look for my Super Clean uh, video link. Go to that video and just comment and you'll be entered. I'm um, planning to do that here real soon. Like I said, July 1st isn't very far away. So get on that if you would like to be included. And other news, um, I've only got a few nukes left uh, for customers to pick up. I've got a customer actually coming this evening at 9. And I've got one coming tomorrow around noon. And then I have two single nukes left. And they're not until uh, the first week of July and the second week of July. And those are just because people's on vacation. And they have some obstacles they had to work around. So that is what it is. But I tell you, I look out here across my bee yard. And uh, it's kind of naked. Sure, there's lots of boxes. Lots of empty boxes. It's time now that I start thinking about my second round of splits. And... Uh, that's what my beekeeping checklist will be geared towards um, the 1st of July. And uh, to get my beekeeping checklist, you can get that over on my Patreon page for a mere $5 a month. So check that out if it's something you're interested in. I like making my second round of splits, and uh, those will be the nukes that I take in over winter. And uh, you can see I still have a couple I've got, well... Let's see, right back here. I had a couple of them left from last winter that I just split this morning. And that is for a customer that's coming tonight. This was a double nuke. Now the queen and five frames are in the top box. This was a double nuke. Now the queen's in the top with five frames of brood, some honey and pollen and all that good stuff. So these will be the last two to go. Or These two will go today, that one and this one. And then tomorrow, Chris is going to pick up that one down there and this one over here. So after those are gone, it's time that I get on my splits, get them made for the year, uh, for overwintering. So that's what I'll be working on. Uh, I just stuck, I think, 32 queen cells in the incubator um, yesterday. So those will be emerging in the next, next week or so. Those will be emerging and then I'll be able to start making my splits. But anyway, what I wanted to talk a little bit about today is my solar wax motor because I mentioned it there a week or so ago and uh, had a couple of people ask if I could make a video on it. So this is it. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does a fine job at melting wax. Uh, okay, let me go over the basics here. We'll start with the outside. Basically, I've got a log in the ground. On top of the log, I've got a platform, and then I've got a Lazy Susan uh, spindle bearing, and then I've got a piece of firewood cut at an angle. And the reason that firewood is at the top cut at an angle, or that piece of log, um, is it allows my box to set at an angle so that the wax as it melts can drain down. Now the Lazy Susan spindle is just because we have, uh, we have five acres here and it's it's a long narrow five acres so to give you an idea this pine tree here that's the edge of my property line if we turn around and look this way these taller pine trees that you see here in the background that's my property line the sun comes up on the far side of those pine trees which it takes to about 11 almost noon before the sun gets over those pine trees up and over and then it sets behind these pine trees and I lose it so for me to have the solar pan uh, the solar wax melter pointing the one direction I get a very small window for melting wax by putting the lazy Susan bearing on there what I'm able to do is I can direct it to where the Sun is as you can see it turns So that's very handy. So basically what I got here, um, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the box. I've got an old storm window from a window I bought at a yard sale. 
okay and all it does is it just sits on here right down against this board at the top i've actually got a little bit of a lip so it can shove up underneath this top board otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to rain and it's going to run down inside your melter so make sure that this piece overlaps okay on the inside here you can see i've got uh the wax portion or where the wax goes is elevated up higher in the box and then down here there's more of a recess which i'm trying to get to where you can see down in there here you go there's more of a recess where my bucket sets to catch the wax so you need to elevate the area where your wax is going to be and i've also got it tapered towards the center each way um, what i used was an old furnace cover for my back part here um, there's some good things about hoarding a little bit of scrap metal and uh, this would be one of them. You have the resources to build something like this. And then I took a couple boards, put them at an angle so that as the wax melts, it kind of pushes it towards the center. And right here, we've got a piece of rabbit wire folded in half. And if you notice the way it's folded in half, it keeps it from having the big quarter inch squares. Um, I took one piece and overlapped each seam over the next one. So they're actually smaller squares than what you would get just using one piece of rabbit wire. So the way it works, as you can see, it drips down here in my bucket. Um, this is just the solar wax motor one time. You look up here, this is what I started with. You come down here and that's what I'm getting. So I've used my lid here so that this wax here isn't getting bleached by the sun. So that keeps the sun off of that wax, but yet it still allows this here to melt and drip down in. Now before I used this, this uh, tub here, I was just using a simple uh, screw bin, and that worked really well. I just have to set a rock under it so that it's set level in here, otherwise it wanted to set in an angle, and then when your wax dries, it all dries over in the bottom corner. So to get this set and level, is ideal and what we got here is I don't just hoard scrap metal people let me set this down for a second I hoard honeycomb this is some old comb that I've cut out for one reason or another uh, it's burr comb just any kind of comb I throw it in this bucket and when it starts getting hot I bring it out here and melt it so all this will be rendered down into a good block of wax. Now, I've been rendering wax and keeping bees for 10 years. Let me tell you, I've tried many different methods. I've tried doing it on the stove and water, which works. I've tried using a slow cooker, which does work. I've tried so many different methods to clean wax. And let me tell you, this by far is the easiest for the beekeeper. Very, very little labor. When you look at your labor to melt wax with something like this setup, your labor consists of removing the window, adding the old wax, and collecting the, the tub once you've got clean wax. So that's all your work. And I guess besides that, saving your wax and throwing it in a bucket with a lid. Now, you want to make sure you use a lid when you save your wax, because if not, wax moths are just going to eat it all up. Not to mention the ants you're going to draw in. So get you a good lid and put on your bucket. But this is by far the easiest method to clean wax. Um, you don't need a whole lot of property. Um, you see, I, I use the Lazy Susan and that's that's helped me a lot uh, the lazy susan bearing so the way this would go now is you would pick the lid you set it up here you're going to slide it up under this top it's hard to do with one hand there we go up under the top and let it rest all the way back down now we'll turn it back this way so we can capture some sun and uh, see what happens. So 
So that's it folks, that's my solar wax motor. Very simple box I just made out of some scrap wood and an old furnace cover and a storm window. So you see, it does pay to pay attention to what people put out in their trash. You can always find a storm window or a furnace cover or uh, an old dishwasher. I love finding them old stainless steel dishwashers out in people's trash. That's, that's a killer way to make some free hive lids right there. Stainless steel ones at that. So anyway, folks, I don't want to get too sidetracked, and I, I can easily do that. So that's what it looks like. And right over here, right there, that's what a dishwasher can do for a hive lid right there buddy yeehaw get her done so anyway folks uh that's my uh, solar wax motor have any questions or comments about it please leave them down below and i'll do my best to answer them for you i'll tell you um, when it comes to this beekeeping i'm all about the easiest method uh, we're starting to hit the 90s now and uh it's getting brutal. You can see I got just sweat pouring down my face right now. And uh, it's not even noon yet. Kind of crazy, huh? So my plans for this afternoon is to go sit in the air conditioner and edit this lovely video for you all. Pretty good plan, huh? I'm thinking it is. Anyway, you like the video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please take time to do so and make sure you click on the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees. Hey.